You did, you see? You see what just happened? Close cast. <laughs> hi, um, hi, Jack. If I'm Zell from the upcoming, lovely to meet you. Congratulations on a fantastic film. If you could just start by telling us a little bit about your role in this film. Yeah, my role is Gio. I get short for Giovanni, I suppose. Um, never thought much about it. I, he is a peculiar man. He is a Neapolitan taxidermist living in London, barely speaks English. Um, is in love with uh, Mervyn Cochinoris. Uh, a playwright of ill repute, uh, played by David Yellowo, and uh, yes, he is an odd man and absolutely one of the suspects. And what first drew you to the script and how did you kind of get involved in the project in the first place? The script came to me through my agent and I read it and I love murder mysteries, love whodunits. Uh, it was a really unusual little character. Uh, the script is, I like, jumped off the page, it's very, very easy to imagine it. It's really, really funny. I knew Tom George was directing, who I'd seen a couple of episodes of This Country and he's clearly got a knack for comedy. And, uh, and then, of course, you see the cast list and you're like, I, I would be a dream to be part of this movie, a massive thing for a young actor to be a part of. Um, so, I mean, I'm salivating at the prospect. <laughs> And um, how was it working with such an all-star cast? Do you have any funny stories or any fond memories of, of working with uh, I spent ah, ah, I spent a lot of time with David and we had a like, lovely, lovely time. I have funny memories, God, it's, it's over a year ago now. My memory's terrible. But, um, Charlie and I spent a long day in the green room. Charlie Cooper and I spent a long day in the green room um, not going on for about like, eight, nine, ten hours and made up a lot of games involving tennis balls and building our own little obstacle course in the green room. That was my favourite memory of, of filming. That was the best bit. And obviously, I mean, there's a real mass appeal, isn't there, for kind of murder mystery. Um, but this also got some comedy. Is it something you're drawn to? I mean, and, and I think are we're all drawn to this sort of thing. It's so satisfying. Um, I mean, Knives Out was a huge success, of course, the Murder on the Orient Express. I think we, we love, it's such like a conversation starter, like, uh, who did it? I mean, it, I think we all love it. And uh, I'm no different. And. Uh, I love watching them, to be part of it. I actually haven't seen it. I'm seeing it for the first time tonight, uh, and it was a while ago, so I've kind of forgotten quite a lot of it. So I, I know who did it, but I've forgotten how we got there, and that's really great. Um, so it's something you could re-watch, because it's, it's quite... Uh, it's really surprising, and you'll forget things, and you'll be really good on the second watch. So. And obviously there's references to the mouse trap through the film. Were you a fan of Agatha Christie before you even got involved in something like this? Uh, I think one of the first shows I ever saw in London was this, the, the, the aforementioned longest running uh, uh, murder mystery in London. So I saw that when I was, we lived abroad for a while, we came back to London. I think my dad and my mum took me to, to see it, actually. Um, so I haven't read as, as many as I should, and I should go away and read more. But... Um, it's a fond memory of like one of my first experiences, theatrical experience in London. So. And what's next for you after this? Uh, I can't say what I'm about to start working on, sadly, but uh, I'm just about to wrap on a show called Bodies for Netflix, which is a really cool, very different sci-fi, although actually similar period. It's 1941 for my character, um, another period drama. So that will be coming out mm, next, early next year. And would you say you're quite drawn to kind of period dramas? I mean, this is this kind of period drama mixed with modern as well, so that's kind of a nice combination, isn't yeah. it? I, I, I love this period um, for the style, for the optimism of the period, for the energy of it. Um, I, I do love the style. I'm sort of wearing slightly inspired, 50s inspired clothing. Um, so uh, I'm drawn to it for that, but I just get put in this stuff. I guess I have that look. I don't know why. Maybe it's the, the curly hair or the high eyebrows. I don't know what it is. Or the, or the moustache that I insist on growing. I don't know. Um, uh, and, I, and it's a period I'm delighted to be involved in. So it's fine by me. Thank you very much for speaking Stop to us. Thank you. Talking. Don't Stop trust talking. anything this man says. He's not a real actor. David. Yes, with David Yellow, who plays, <laughs> with, plays uh, Mervyn Cock and Norris. Um, I'm very much in love. Whether he reciprocates... It's a, it's a cause of my sandwich for me. Um, and, yeah, he's sort of loosely connected. I mean, he's, he's the playwright's partner, cohabitation -y, and uh, as he gets, gets wrapped up in it, and and because he's an oddball, and he does definitely has his reasons why it could have been him, he gets brought into this. Amazing. And what drew you to this project? Oh my god, I mean, the script is brilliant, it's really funny, um, it's, it's a really satisfying you've done it, it's, the cast is huge, uh, people I've, I admire, I've seen in films over the years, Sam, Sersha, and Ruth, and, uh, 
the younger actors like uh, Charlie are doing really well and so that was a big thing and then the character was really odd and unusual for me and I got to speak Italian in the movie which was fun and, and challenging and I wonder how it came out uh, I have to ask an Italian um, so there's so many reasons to be involved I'm really lucky Amazing, and um, because it's a whodunit, how in the dark are you in this production? Were you from the beginning? Did you know who it was? Or did you like keep your keep in secret right until the end? I did know, yes. Although not until the last minute. I mean, it is. It, I had absolutely no clue, really, when reading it the first time. Not a clue. Uh, and and I haven't seen it for, I haven't seen it for a while, so I've actually kind of forgotten how we get there. <laughs> so tonight, quite it's just like, how do we? Yeah, how? how? Um, so yeah, no, I had I had, I had, I knew, I knew, I knew. Amazing. And why do you think we keep coming back to who done it? Because there's a lot of resurgence for these kind of murder mysteries. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, it's never gone away as like a, something that people love to read and, uh, and thrillers and mystery. I don't know why it's come back in a renaissance. They're so satisfying. They're so good. Maybe they're very difficult. I mean, they're complicated and they need a, they need a, quite a big budget and. Uh, and no, and they may be hard to pull off. Maybe people are intimidated by them. I don't know. Um, I think they've done an unbelievable job on this one, and uh, but they're, they're so satisfying. It's great to see them back. Amazing. And last silly question: the film is called "See How They Run." How do you run? <laughs> <laughs> um, in uh, like Phoebe and Friends. Amazing with the shorts and the sandals yeah, combo. Exactly. Like that. Amazing. Well, thank you so much.